Hola, soy Jordan, and this is not a Spanish quickie. I'll be back next week with two brand new Spanish quickies, but today I wanted to do something a little different. First, I'm gonna tell you where I've been these last couple months, then I'm gonna tell you something that really pissed me off. Since I went on hiatus a couple months ago, I've gotten lots of messages. If you wrote me to tell me that you missed my videos or to make sure I was okay, I think I've gotten back to everybody at this point. If not, it was just an oversight. But really, thank you so much. It really meant a lot to me. It made me feel really good hearing from so many of you. The reception I've gotten from everybody here in general has really been awesome. I started Gringo Espanol about six months ago because I thought it would be fun to share all the stuff I'd learned and discovered through my travels over the last 15 years. I made so many mistakes and wasted so much of my time, I figured it would be cool to help you avoid doing the same thing. I was so nervous when I posted that first Spanish quickie, and I still get nervous every time I post a video, but all your likes and your comments, man, okay, maybe I don't totally suck. So thank you, my fellow Gringo. I'll do anything I can to help you. Please let me know what that is. So where have I been? Well, I don't like to push my wares too much in these videos, but before I started Gringo Espanol, I released a Spanish course called Bare Minimum Spanish. It's not available right now, but it's a video crash course in travel Spanish. I teach you only what you need to say and when to say it in the most common travel situations and how to understand what everybody says back to you. There's a lot more to it than that, and I'll tell you more about it in future videos, but right now, the point is, where have I been? So, I created Bare Minimum Spanish last year, then at the beginning of this year, I started Gringo Espanol and started started making the Spanish quickies. Well, I'm not sure if you noticed, but I released 30 Spanish quickies so far this year, and in each one, I got a little better at presenting the information, and I got a little better at making the videos, too. I have a long way to go, I hope to keep improving with each and every one, but I'm certainly better now than I was last year. But then I looked back at the videos I had made for bare minimum Spanish, and quite frankly, they sucked. I was very proud of them when I made them, but the way I teach everything here at Gringo Espanol that y'all love so much is completely different than how I taught everything in bare minimum Spanish. So I decided to completely redo the course. I threw away what I had and started from scratch. So that's where I've been. I was redoing bare minimum Spanish. Originally, I figured it would take me about one month to redo the course, then one month quickly turned into two and a half months. But here I am. I'm all done and ready to jump right back in where we left off. But a couple things happened while I was on hiatus that I want to tell you about first, and this is important. In fact, this is perhaps the most important video I've made so far. Now, this is kind of weird, but pretty much as soon as I went on hiatus, my videos over at YouTube took off. Take a look. Right here is when I left. Before that, people were watching my videos, but not that many. But then oddly, right here is when I made my last video. I have no idea what happened. It's just a matter of YouTube suggesting my videos, I think, and people liking them. It felt good, I must say. Just seeing that graph go up and up was cool for sure. But then I got a lot of cool comments too. I noticed that the way you explain it and the way my professor teaches are completely opposite. He is so confusing and fast paced. Thank you, you are my new professor. Thank you so much for your videos. From one gringo to another, you make learning the language a lot simpler. These comments made me feel feel even better than some stupid graph. Comments like that are what fuels me. That's exactly why I started Gringo Espanol. But if you've ever been through some YouTube comments, you know it can get kind of crazy in there. People can be really mean. They say stuff from the safety of their home that they'd never say to anybody's face ever. But the weird thing is, even though I made 30 videos, I covered so many things. Pronunciation, conjugation, verbs, vocabulary, adjectives, adverbs, so many things. Pronouns. All the negative comments were about one thing, my pronunciation. Did I even say pronunciation right? One person even said, people will know you're not a native. People won't think I'm a native, huh? It's called Gringo Espanol, for a gringo, by a gringo. When I travel, I have it in my head, and I've been told over and over again, I look and act and sound about as gringo as they come. They won't think I'm a native? You just took the time to tell me I don't say the E perfectly, or I say the O wrong? I say every letter wrong. But here's the thing, my whole body tingles when I think about all the experiences I've had over the years years speaking Spanish all over the world. I helped a lady with her mule or her donkey or whatever it was in Peru. I was invited to eat with a nice family in Mexico. I played with cute children in the streets of Guatemala. Their grandmother gave me some arroz con leche or rice with milk, which made me sick for days, but that's another story. The point is, at no point in any of those interactions did anybody ever not understand what I said because I spoke with a thick gringo accent. The lady told me what she needed with her donkey or llama or whatever, and I asked her some questions to make sure I understood. At no point did the little kids in Guatemala not understand me when we were playing because I said voy instead of boy. The father that invited me to eat lunch with his family in Mexico definitely didn't care that I said gracias a little funny. And isn't that the point of learning a language? Understanding and being understood? As you go throughout this world, I discovered this way too late. Whether it's in high school or college Spanish class, in front of your computer displaying Rosetta Stone, traveling to Spain, Costa Rica, or Argentina, you'll find there 
there are three types of people that want to help us with our Spanish. The first kind want to help us communicate with people we're not supposed to be able to communicate with. They want us to learn words so we can order food, ask for directions when we're lost, make a little small talk, then later tell jokes and fight about politics. They never lose sight of the goal. We want people to understand us when we talk and we want to understand other people when they talk. Then there's Henny. Henny was my Dutch teacher when I studied in Holland for a semester in college. Dutch has some notoriously difficult sounds and this teacher spent many days making us all go around a room repeating a sound like ow until we got it right. So Jared would have to say ow, Henny would say no, Jared ow, Henny no, Jared ow, Henny Perfect. Jared said it the same way every time, and it didn't matter anyway. What a waste of time. Henny is just your typical, normal teacher. I'm not saying all Spanish teachers are bad. Definitely not. I know for a fact at least a few follow my videos and don't leave nasty comments. I never personally had a good Spanish teacher, but I'm sure they exist. It is hard when the students aren't there because they want to learn Spanish, though. Then finally, the third kind. The people who want to make themselves feel better because they know Spanish better than you do. They'll correct every mistake you make, talk really fast, and use slang you've never heard. They might be your teachers, or friends, or family members, or yes, Latinos and Spaniards on YouTube who for some reason are watching videos on learning how to speak Spanish. Be careful of those last two groups, they'll really hinder your progress. The normal teacher will make you repeat words until you say them perfectly and quiz you on terms like conditional perfect and pluperfect. The know-it-alls will make you feel like crap, and that's not cool, especially when you're trying to speak a foreign language, which isn't easy. You should be commended for even trying. In fact, the most important part of speaking a language is confidence. You can learn all the words and grammar you want, but if you don't have the confidence to go out and use it, I got news for you. You don't speak Spanish. The two videos I made on pronunciation are my two most popular videos right now, and that makes me sad because pronunciation doesn't really matter. As long as you basically say the right word, basically right, you'll be more than basically understood. If you want to speak Spanish better and faster, then don't worry about pronunciation. Your time is better spent on new words. When you learn a new word, you can say more things. When you learn how to pronounce a word, better, you can just say the same thing better, I guess? That's it. Like I said, I'm back now and I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. I have two brand new quickies coming at you next week, then some special stuff planned for the weeks after that. I'll see you next time. Hasta luego. Adios, amigo.